Hello, this is K6OZY, back from Dayton, and going to start recording a few new videos for you guys based on feedback I received when I was meeting all you guys um, over in Dayton. Thanks for coming up and seeing me in the Flex booth and telling me uh, the issues and some suggestions for future videos and what problems you are still having. And that motivated me to make a new set of videos. Um, one will be based on Windows, and another one will be based on OS X, if I can figure out a way to to record it. Uh, I don't own a program to record in OS X, like Camtasia. I've never went out and purchased that software. I'm using XSplit on the PC. So I'll still have to figure out how to do it on the Mac, if I can get it working. But on the PC here, what I'm trying to show is an alternative to my second video where I had you build a Maestro Raspberry Pi for remote use. And a lot of people were able to successfully build it, but there's a lot of people who are having problems with it, which I can understand. Building a Raspberry Pi that you will be taking around in the field can have some problems. If things go wrong, it's hard to get into the Raspberry Pi to fix it. And there was a few key issues that would make it hard to be used in a hotel environment. My video primarily discussed having the Raspberry Pi join your phone hotspot, but if you were in a hotel, you'd prefer to use that Wi-Fi. But the problem with a hotel is that they have splash screens and agreements that you must agree to before the internet starts working at all. And that would be hard to do on a Raspberry Pi. So I was thinking of a way that we could use an existing computer. You probably are taking a laptop with you in the, in the field, and you can use it to become a, a Maestro Bridge. And then I can show you how to use the same laptop that you're using as a bridge to then run your um, logging software and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. So anyway, on the first video, I showed you how to go download and install SoftEther on a computer for for using the management program. On this environment, I'm recording this from my laptop, and I'm going to install the full uh, VPN server onto the laptop and show you how to set it up as a bridge. So this page looks familiar to you. This is what we use to download just the manager in video one you were picking uh, server manager for Windows, but in this time we want to download the whole server. So you're going to pick the Windows platform and just download it as normal. And then we're going to just quickly install it. So I already had it downloaded and I'm going to start the install. And it's pretty straightforward, just like when you were installing the manager, except for this time it's going to install the entire suite. And this time I'm going to pick server even though I technically only need the bridge, the server contains the bridge as well. And we will uh, set it all up in one slew. If you want to just install the bridge, you can. It doesn't install the server component. And the manager is what you installed on video one. Uh, if you wanted to install the manager on your laptop to manage your Pi as well, you could install the bridge and that also installs the manager. So we're gonna pick bridge uh, just to keep the video simple. It doesn't install, install the server component because we're not gonna run a VPN server. We want the bridge and we want the server manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick next on that. Agree and download, uh, install, and here we go. It's gonna drop this in here and it's also gonna install the server manager. We're assuming that you have a Pi running according to video one at home where your server is, where your uh, radio is. And uh, now we're going to launch the server manager. Now I have some pre things in here because I was using it for my trip to Dayton, but uh, I deleted all the configs on the local settings so you can see this. So you, there'll be a local host, this server on yours, and you go ahead and connect to it. And uh, it's gonna ask you to set a new password because it's a fresh install. And I'm gonna set it to a password. And then we're gonna get into the manager. Now you'll notice that since we installed the bridge, 
only the, the VPN server portion is grayed out because that component is not installed on the, on your local laptop. And um, before I proceed any further, most laptops now don't come with Ethernet adapters. This I'm recording this on a Microsoft Surface Book, and it does not come with an integrated Ethernet adapter. You'll see if I go to the network connections that I just have my Wi-Fi, and these are all other VPN connections that you see here. Um, in order to make this work with your Maestro, you're going to need to have a USB Ethernet adapter for your computer if you don't have a built-in Ethernet port. And for this video, I have uh, a little $15 Realtek um, Anchor Ethernet adapter I got off of Amazon, and it has native support in Windows 10, so it'll be just fine. I'm going to plug it in so that we have uh, this adapter available for um, setting up the bridge. Because we're going to have the Ethernet adapter have a cable run between it and the Maestro. And uh, we're going to use the Wi-Fi built into the laptop to join whatever Wi-Fi you're going to use to get on the Internet. It can be your phone, but this time it can be uh, the hotel Wi-Fi or anything like that. So you're going to effectively join whatever Wi-Fi you need to get onto the internet with. Make sure that you're fully on the internet and you can open up a browser on this laptop and browse the internet as expected. And then you will move over to running your uh, bridge server. So back to the install here. Uh, well, you'll notice on the network adapters, now I have my ethernet adapter right here and it's unplugged. Um, we're going to use that Ethernet adapter as the device to bridge the traffic. So we're going to configure this to be a bridge uh, VPN server. I hit yes. And you'll notice that um, the first part, create users, is grayed out, unlike on the part one video, because there is no users on a, on a VPN bridge. It's literally connecting to your home, and there's no local users at all. We're going to configure this setting, and in here is where you're going to put in your home pie, like um, whatever you want to call it, your home VPN server. And then remember from video one, where you had something.softether.net. So let's just say it's, you know, like k 6 aussie.softether.net. You want to make sure you change this to port um, 5555. To match what we did in the first video, the VPN, and then the user account will be the exact same user account and password that you created in video two. So if you go watch video two, you'll see that I show you how to set up a user account called VPN Bridge. You don't have to make that account. I just like having a different account on the server for VPN Bridge. So VPN Bridge and this password here. I'm actually sitting inside my local network, so I don't think this will work. Yeah, see, it's not it's not going to work because I'm actually inside my local network here. Um, let's see if I didn't get the password right. It doesn't matter for what we're doing here, but yeah, so uh, I could actually just probably use my main account. But I suggest using uh, a VPN bridge account or something like that. I'm going to bring it offline and back online. OK, there, there it's established. So you can see that's established here. But I'm, since I'm in my home network, I don't want to do that because it'll create a, a nasty broadcast loop and will bring down your network. So that works. Um, so I'm going to hit exit. And then here, you're going to pick the, real, the, the USB NIC that you installed for the bridging. So in this case, it's this Realtek. USB NIC, hit close. And you can ignore this. We're not running this on a virtual machine. And and that's it. Now, here's the thing. The bridge server runs all the time, and you don't want it to run all the time. So after it's installed, I would suggest that you change the service's default startup state to, to manual. You don't want to run the bridge VPN bridge all the time, only when you're using your Maestro. 
So to change that default behavior, you need to get into the services control panel. You can um, right click on the start button in Windows 10, click run, uh, and then type in services.msc. And when you do that, it will open up the services menu here. And in here, we're looking for um, soft ether. You can see it in the bridge server. And you can see that it's set to start automatically. We don't want that. We want to start it manually, only when you're going to use your Maestro remotely. So you're going to double click on this, and you want to change this from automatic to manual and hit apply. And you can leave it running if you need it to run it, but what would happen is you'd boot up your machine and it would be in a stopped state. And then once you get on the internet and once you are successfully connected to uh, the internet with your browser, you shove in this USB adapter and then run the ethernet cable between the uh, USB adapter in your Maestro, and then come start this service. Don't turn your Maestro on yet because you need the VPN service to start up and connect fully. And then after, I don't know, five seconds, 10 seconds or so, you can start the Maestro. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, start the bridge. You can see it's running. Uh, I can look at the, 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 uh, the bridge here. It says that because I stopped the service from underneath of it. So if I reconnect to it here, I can go to the manage the bridge and click manage sessions. And you can see, you know, that it's attempting to connect. Let me see if it shows up. No, actually it wouldn't show up here. You'd have to check on your Pi side. Uh, actually, I think I have the bridge set to turn, to not connect. Uh, let's see, manage cascaded connections. Yeah, it stopped. So I'm gonna, Turn that online like that. Connection established. Again, I don't want to do that at home. I'll screw my home network up. Once that's a, online, um, you're good to go. You can close all this out, turn on your maestro, and voila, you can connect just fine. Now, here's the cool part of this. You can VPN into your home twice. So the soft ether is used specifically for the maestro. Everything on that ethernet port, that ethernet USB adapter is what is being bridged over to your home network. But this local computer is not. So right now, even though the bridge is up and I open up smart SDR, um, you're gonna see my local radios here. Um, I'm gonna demo with my friend's radio. You notice that my this third 6300 that will show up here soon, hopefully is is not there even though on the maestro it could see it that's because your your laptop is not vpn in even though the vpn bridge is running if that makes sense but there's nothing preventing you from vpn any, creating another vpn connection that's native to windows uh, on part one of my video i showed you how to vpn in using your windows 10 machine and that's what you want to do here so I'm just gonna go into my VPN section here and I have a, I have a test server set up right here. And uh, I'll hit advanced options so you can see it. And you know, I pick L2 TP IPsec with pre-shared key. You type in your pre-shared key. You put in your username and password, say yes. Um, and then you don't wanna send all traffic I'm going fast here, I know, but you can go back to video one and, and look at it in more detail. You know, you need to right click on the VPN connection, go to properties, go to networking, TCP IP advanced, and make sure that use default gateway on remote network is unchecked. I go over this on video one. And then just VPN in again to the same machine. Now, I know that this isn't the same as my VPN bridges, but this is just to show that you would VPN into the home net into the remote network. Um, you know, just just to make this proper. Let me see if I can actually do this fully instead of you know kind of just hacking it and telling you guys to do it this way. Let me connect in. Uh, I'm going to go manage hub, 
manage cascade connections. I'm going to leave this one alone. You can actually bring up multiple ones, but not at one time. That's the beauty of it. So this is going to my home network. I'm going to call this test server. I'm going to go to my friend's test pi that I've installed in his house as a test. Five, 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 five. Um, I hope that's the password. Let's see if that works. Unsure if I port forwarded his 5555. Nope, okay, so I didn't. So I can't show you that demo. Um, but it it doesn't matter. Just connect to your home pie, and then once you're connected to your home pie through the soft br ether bridge, just come in here and connect again right here. You'll see completing the connection. And now I'm connected and poof, there's my friend's 6300 that popped up right there. And uh, I then I can't connect to it obviously because your maestro is connected to it, but that's not why I'm I'm VPNing in again. The goal is is to then be able to open up Smart Cat. Do not run DAX over the WAN. DAX is uncompressed. It will take too much bandwidth. Don't do it. Wait for 2.0. But Smart Cat you can run just fine, and this will allow you to connect to the radio over the network uh, over the VPN for logging information. So now you're connected and then you can launch N1MM and connect to your remote radio. At the same time, your maestro is going through this laptop to your home radio. It's very cool. And since most people carry it around their laptop, this is an easy implementation. So let me back out of this. I'm gonna drop off the VPN. When you're done with your bridge, uh, I advise stopping your services here and closing out of the bridge and then going into your services and stopping your bridge here so that it doesn't accidentally run in the background. And then you can gank out your USB Ethernet adapter because you won't need it anymore. Just like that. And now you're back to normal laptop mode. So. I hope that helped. Um, I don't have the ability to show an external video since I'm using my laptop to record like I do on my desktop to show the Maestro running. But I assure you this works, and it works very well. Um, it may look a little kludgy having a laptop tethered to your Maestro, but having the flexibility of being able to easily reconfigure your internet connection and join a multitude of internet connections while in the field, I feel makes this uh, very worthwhile until the native VPN client is active in the Maestro. So I hope that helps. Uh, leave some comments if you need me to specify a couple, anything clear. And uh, now I'm going to go try to figure out how to record this on OS X so I can show you how to do the same thing. I know there's a couple guys who came up to me at Dayton who said they want to do this with their MacBook. And as you can see in Soft Ether here, you can download it for OS X just fine. Um, so I gotta figure out how to record it. Maybe there's some freeware application that I can do some recording, but I'm gonna go look for that now. Okay guys, talk to you later, 73.